The pandemic of the 21st century is likely to be diabetes. Diabetes is also the now accepted as the biggest threat to global TB control that we have. The people with diabetes have three times the risk of tuberculosis than people without diabetes. So this is in fact one of the biggest challenges facing tuberculosis as well as diabetes. There are today two billion people infected with TB. In fact, it is likely that two-thirds of the population of the earth in fact are infected with tuberculosis, though not all of them will be sick. At the same time, we have right now 382 million people with diabetes globally. This is likely to rise to 600 million by the 2035. This very large number of people with diabetes are mainly in the low and middle income countries. And this is a problem because these are also the countries where we find tuberculosis. And here we have a map which shows that 230 million of the people with diabetes actually live in the high burden tuberculosis countries. So the overlap of these two epidemics, pandemics, is the very important factor in driving tuberculosis. Now some of these countries are particularly badly affected. China and India are among the leaders. We'll start with China. In China, there are now nearly 100,000 people with diabetes. And China is a high burden country with 99 per 100,000 people infected with tuberculosis. India is even worse off, not because there are quite as many people with diabetes, but because the burden of TB is very much higher, 230 per 100,000. Also affected is Brazil, and this is again because of very high rates of uh, diabetes with also a lot of uncontrolled TB. The Russian Federation is also very important. Here there are also very large numbers of people with diabetes and also high rates of tuberculosis. Indonesia, Pakistan and Bangladesh finish off the list of the top leaders of countries that have both diabetes and tuberculosis. So here we have very, very large numbers of people who have exposure to tuberculosis. And this is what is driving the pandemic. One of the things that we need to understand is that the global risk of diabetes to tuberculosis is in fact higher than that of AIDS. And the reason for that is there are 10 times as many people with diabetes as there are with AIDS. So that's 10 times as many people at risk. The individual risk from diabetes is in tuberculosis is in fact lower than that of AIDS. But at the level of the population, the risk is far greater. In diabetes, we think that immunity to tuberculosis is impaired, and we have some idea of how that may be happening. But these people are not only exposed and more likely to become infected and to get disease when they're exposed, but they are also very difficult to treat. They do not respond to drugs very well, and some of these drugs they don't tolerate very well. They take longer to get rid of the bacillus. They are more likely to relapse. They are more likely to develop drug-resistant TB. And they are likely to be sicker for longer, and they are more likely to die. So the diabetes patient with tuberculosis is a major challenge to the physician. So what can we do about this? One of the other problems that we need to face is that undiagnosed tuberculosis and undiagnosed diabetes are on a very large scale. A lot of cases of tuberculosis are missed and diabetes, as many as half of the people with diabetes are not in fact diagnosed. So what should we do about this? The things that are really top of our list is to decide when and how we should screen. Should we screen tuberculosis patients for diabetes? Should we screen diabetes patients for tuberculosis? It's pretty well accepted that the TB patients should be screened for diabetes and that can be relatively easily done. Screening diabetes patients for tuberculosis is more complicated because it really depends, uh, the success of a program and the cost effectiveness depends on how much tuberculosis you have and how much diabetes you have. In addition to that, we don't have very good diagnostic methods for either of the diseases. They're either expensive or not very accurate 
or both at the same time, which gives us an additional prognosis. So we need to figure out now what additional research we need, how we are going to screen, how we are going to screen using better tools. Do we need to treat diabetes patients with tuberculosis in a different way? And how are we going to solve the problem of prevention? How do we uh, get to diabetes patients and get them to understand and their caregivers to understand what a challenge tuberculosis is in diabetes.